What is up friends? So today we are going to be looking at our first experimental attempt at carving some of this Indonesian wood oval. So you can see here there's two, well two different types of exposed finger. There's two opals that look fairly similar. They're kind of pre-shaped but this is how I got them. All of this is still being stored under the baby oil. Not sponsored by baby oil but there's a lot of it in there. And I'm basically going to treat one exactly like I treat all my other opals. So I'm just going to carve it with a Dremel using water. The other one I'm going to save and do a sandpaper sandpaper carving with. Since, it, since they're both really similar, we'll see how it goes. The sandpaper I won't use any, any additional water, but I'll just use some extra baby oil just to make sure that it doesn't dry out. And then we're going to move on to the next stage, which is treating them. Because as you can see, if I just grab one... And we get it to focus... So you can see there that that... I don't know what to call it, potch I guess... Has a weird mix of grey and black. So we're going to try to turn all of that black and to like proper, proper dark black. So... There's not a lot of shaping work that I've got to do. I've just got to see how this stuff handles being reshaped with the Dremel. I don't want to use any of my Nova tips or any of the good bits to actually do this work just because I'm unsure how the baby oil is going to go with it. So we're bringing back this old, this old boy, the uh, beginner's carving kit from Gem Cuts. So as I've written here, so that's a 180 grit. We'll start with that. Unfortunately, this uh, 320, I think it is, is pretty much completely cooked. If you want to know how that happened, just check out the review that I did for this kit. It was very disappointing. And then I'll just jump, jump across that one, go to the 600, and then I might use these just to see how they behave with the uh, Indonesian wood opal. And yeah, that's the plan for this video. Then the next one I'll do the same thing but with the other piece and we'll hit it with sandpaper and see if that works out works out anything like normal Australian opal does. And then yeah, treating. There's a lot of different treating methods that I've seen. Indonesian opal in general, the information, I've got so much contradictory information on it. People saying it's hydrophane, people saying it's not, people saying it'll craze immediately if you leave it out of baby oil. I'm just going to take it like a proper scientist and we're just going to try things one by one and we'll build up our own list of what you can and can't do with this stuff. Because a lot of the Indonesians, I mean they know this stuff inside and out. They know how to handle it, they know how, to, how they carve it. But they don't like to tell you because they think it ruins the prices. So, I mean, they don't even like to say that it's stored in baby oil or mineral oil or anything like that because I think Australians in particular, as well as other Western countries, wouldn't wouldn't pay top dollar for it. And I mean, it's, it's hardly as stable as Australian opal, so it is not worth as much. But I don't know why they have to be so embarrassed about the fact that it has to be treated differently, because I mean, it's just opal. It's a different type of opal. If it needs a different treatment, so be it. It just needs a different treatment. Some of this stuff looks insanely good when it's carved up. I don't care if it needs oil or not. So yeah, we're going to make up our own mind over time. So I'm going to switch over now and we'll get to carving.
Right, so we're back. It's actually a very odd material. It's definitely not hydrophane. It's not affected by the water at all. I literally just took it out of the tub, dried it with the tissue, chucked it in the water, washed off any remaining oil on the outside, and yeah, the colour is still definitely there. It looks much better now. You saw right at the start when I put the tip against it, there was already a little bit of a chip out of it and a chunk of that just fractured and it looks like it just fractured alongside the surface of the opal. So I think this wood substrate is, well the fossilized wood substrate, doesn't actually stick onto the opal all that well. There's some really good blues and greens in this though and a little bit of red, yellow, orange kind of flame colors as well. So I'm finding it's very similar to boulder opal, but much softer. So this fossilized wood is even softer than the uh, mud of the ironstone when it comes to boulder opal. Which makes it a little bit hard to keep a nice shape. And I'm also worried about it chipping, so the opal itself seems very fragile. And rather than my bit just carving it away, you can see here that it's actually pitting it quite severely. And that's just a 180, 180 grit. So I'm going to drop all the way back down to the 600 and go back at it with the 600 to get rid of some of the, uh, the, the chips and stuff that are still in the wood. And just to do the shaping, because the shaping I think will not work with a 180 grit. I think it's too coarse and this stuff is just too soft. So yeah, that's my first impressions of the material. It, it's a really thin mud that comes off it too. A bit thinner than what the ironstone boulder opal is. And yeah, I think starting out with a 180 grit, 180 grit diamond bit is way too, way too severe. So we'll see what the 600 does. And we should be able to get a nice, nice little egg shape. It's actually a pretty good cab shape. An oval cab, pretty high domed. We've just got to get it even, but the 180 just isn't isn't cutting it. Well, it is cutting it. It's cutting it too much. So, 600 it is. Let's get back to it. It's a very interesting piece, I'll say that much. Um, so yeah, it's it's taken an okay shape. There's still a lot of imperfections in it though, and the main reason for that is if you look at it, 
there's black and grey, but even deeper than that, there's actually different hardnesses to this substrate, this opalized wood. So you'll be rubbing away up here and it'll be coming away like mud, then you'll be coming down to somewhere over here and it'll be hard as a rock, it'll be like harder than the opal. So it's really tough and there's constantly new porous little sections that keep coming up the deeper you go. So I think the material, and it feels pretty light, so the material must be fairly porous, which doesn't bode well in terms of being able to get a nice nice surface on it. And I see why a lot of the time I've heard that people use like liquid glass and everything to seal the outside of it. Um, in terms of where I go from here, I'm kind of in two minds. I don't know whether I want to polish it first and then treat it afterwards or treat it first and polish it afterwards. I kind of want to go with both methods and test them both out anyway. So I think what I'll do is, using this starter kit, I'll go through some of these soft tips and just see if it takes to any kind of, any kind of pre-polish at all. I mean, all these chips are going to hinder that significantly, but it's got some really nice colour. And if I give it a quick wet, you can see here that it's got a really nice flash of red and orange and all of that through it. And then it's got that consistent body tone of green-blue. Mainly because this opalized wood is running all the way through the through the piece, so unlike the Australian Opal where you can see all the way through it because there's nothing on the back, this has got that consistent dark back, which really makes the colour just sit there. And yeah, there's plenty of flash of fire all the way through this, so the, the reds and oranges leap through every now and then. It's, yeah, it's really, really odd material. It's just so inconsistent. But I'll give it a bit more of a rub with the soft tips and see if it comes to anything. Otherwise, we're going to move on to treating it. But let's have a look at the polishing first. So that answers that. I gave it a pretty, pretty good attempt with the uh, soft tips, and it's made zero distance all it, difference. All it's done is really just degraded the tip. So that was about as uneventful as this year's Olympics. So at this point, I think we move on to treatment strategies. The first one I'm going to try is baby oil in the natural sunlight. So that I don't actually have a time frame on that. I don't know how long it takes. All I know is that you leave it out in the sun until it goes black under baby oil. So that's that's about it. We'll call it quits for this video at this point. I'll start recording this baby oil treatment but it could take a long time so I'll get to carving some other pieces. I'll carve another one of these with the sandpaper method and then treat him as well but I'll use a different treatment method each time and we'll we'll see what works. We'll actually document some of this stuff and help people in the future because the information is cloudy at best. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.